Hi, thank you for tuning in to the Daily Dose for Spiritual Growth. Hope you joined us last week as Pastor Nabil and I went to Minnesota, kind of gave you a little tour of the state in case you've never been there, but showed you some highlights from our life, a pivotal places where God really moved, spoke, challenged, equipped us for what he was calling us to do. So you can always go back and watch those if you want. But here I am today back in Pennsylvania, excited to be home Excited to be back at church yesterday. What an awesome time we had doing a panel discussion. If you aren't a part of Shrewsbury Assembly, you can always check that out online as well. But this week, we're going to be talking about one chapter in the Bible. Now, when you think of your Bible, there's a whole lot of chapters. But as I was studying and thinking about what to talk about this week, a chapter really jumped out to me, and it is Psalms chapter 37. Now, Psalms chapter 37 is written by David. This is the David from the Old Testament who was little shepherd boy who slayed a giant. This is the same David who was called out as a young child that he was going to be king. This is the same David that became king and ruled in a mighty way. This is the same David who fell to sin, committed adultery, committed murder. He lived a life, right? But one thing that is consistent throughout David's life in his high moments and in his low moments is his dedication and love for the Lord. And so when he was in the high moments, he gave God the credit. And when he was in his low moments, he repented and turned back to him. And so we can learn so much from his life, but also what we can learn from is when we read through the Psalms, several of the Psalms were written by David. And it's so interesting to see his perspective from the life that he lived and how he's learned to live for the Lord. Now, this chapter talks a lot about wicked, evil people. I want to just ask you a question, make you ponder something just for a moment. Are you a person who loves justice? Like, does it just bother you to the core when someone who cheated gets ahead? Or when someone who's just mean, who who isn't kind, who treats people disrespectfully, and yet they're in a position of power, and so people have to treat them good and have to do what they say, even though really, to their core, they're not a good person. You see, these things can really irk us. These things can bother us. These things can upset us. It can lead us to worrying. It can lead us to being frustrated with God. It can lead us to jealousy and envy. It can lead us to a lot of things. But in the book of Psalms, David specifically actually talks often about evil people, about people that don't love God, that aren't honoring God, and how we sometimes can compare ourselves to them. And so this week, we're going to go through this chapter. I'm just going to read a couple verses a day. If you track with me all week, you will read through this entire chapter, but we're going to read through it slowly. There's only 40 verses. And we're going to take a week to read it because there's so much jam-packed in here. You know, when you think of justice and if you want justice to happen, you want people to be seen for who they are. You want people that do the right thing to be honored and people who do the wrong thing to be set aside. Really, our rule is upside down when it comes to that. And oftentimes, the opposite is true. But what we need to remember is that God, God is the God of justice. God is in control. God is the one who sits on the throne. And although things on earth might seem like out of control, we need to remember and put our trust in the person who's in control. So think about that as we read through the first seven verses today. Let me just take a moment and read to you. Again, this is Psalms chapter 37, verses 1 through 7. In David speaking, he says, Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. He will make your innocence radiate like the dawn and the justice of your cause will shine like the noonday sun. Be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. These are some verses that we need to read when our blood pressure starts to rise. You know, I I don't know about you, but the presidential election is coming and maybe you have some views about what type of people are running as candidates. I don't know. But I know we've been watching the first debate just a week or so ago. Maybe you were starting to feel like, wait a minute, this isn't right. Why are these people in power? Or why is that person saying that? Or maybe when you go to work and you see people that take shortcuts and they're getting ahead and we can get really frustrated and feel like, God, where are you? Well, remember what the word of God says to us. It says, don't worry. Don't be jealous of people that are doing wrong. Don't envy them. Don't fret. Don't worry about what they're doing, but trust the Lord. We have such beautiful 
instruction here, beginning in verse 3, it says, trust in the Lord and do good. You see, sometimes we get annoyed by people that are doing the wrong thing, and we can, if we don't guard our hearts, we can begin to see that their way seems to prosper, their shortcuts, their um, lack of integrity. Well, that worked for them. So, you know, I'm just going to, you know, subtly kind of slide into a little lack of integrity too. And really, that's a lack of trust in God. You see, God has given us such clear commands in his word on how to live in a God-honoring way. And yet sometimes when we honor God, we don't see the fruit of our labor right away on earth. And we see shortcuts that seem to kind of bypass that waiting and trusting in God. And sometimes we take them. But those ways don't honor God. It says, when you do good, it says in verse 3, then you will live safely in the land and prosper. I want to just sit for, for a minute on verse 4. You know, this is a verse that's used often. And I'm interested, I wish we could chat back and forth, but I'm interested in what you think this verse means. Let me read it to you. It says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. I think sometimes that verse has been used in the context of, you know, if you if you delight in the Lord, like just pray, just ask, he'll give you everything that you want. But I want to really make a point of the fact that it says your heart's desires. You see, it doesn't say your earthly desires. It doesn't say the desires of your body. It doesn't say that the pleasures of this world. It says your heart's desires. This is really talking about the things deep within your soul. And it says, how do how do we achieve that? It's by trusting the Lord and doing good. You live safely in the land. Take delight in the Lord. What does it mean to take delight in the Lord? I think it's really referring to the way that you live your life. Are you living for God? Are you striving to honor God? Are you a follower of Christ? Are you a Christian who puts God first in your life? You see, it's not just saying anyone and everyone just asking you'll get whatever you want. No, it's saying when you focus your attention, your life, your love, your devotion, your commitment to God, then as you're honoring God with your life, God will give you the desires of your heart, your soul. And what are the heart's desires and the soul desires of a person who's God honoring, who's living their life for him? Well, deep down, it's to live for God, it's to love God, it's to serve God, it's to submit to God and to take pleasure in God that he would take pleasure in you. You see, it's not these selfish things that you might want. Well, I want a boat. I would like a boat, by the way. I want to be rich. I would like to be rich, by the way, right? All these earthly things that come and go. And oftentimes when we see people prospering that do evil, they're achieving and attaining earthly things. That is, this verse is said, well, whether like the grass and the spring flowers, when we put our heart's desires and attention on the things of God, he will fulfill those requests in an eternal way, giving you his peace and his comfort, prospering you in a way that honors him. So as you take time maybe today to read through these verses more, to reflect on them, I challenge you to lay your heart before God and say, God, really, what are the desires of my heart? Are they God honoring? Do they align with you? Am I really trusting you even when things don't seem fair? Am I really trusting you and doing good even though it would be easy not to? Take some time to think about, to pray about that today, and what God might speak to you. Would you be obedient and say yes to him today? Hey, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope to see you again tomorrow as we continue on with Psalm 37 in another daily dose for spiritual growth.